Welcome back to the network. Our guest is a noted attorney who has mounted groundbreaking litigation on environmental issues, in particular the Save Guana Key effort. Welcome to the network, Attorney Fred Smith. Good to have you on. Thank you very much, Anita. Now, of course, you are a part of this uh, effort and this campaign to save Clifton Key or save Clifton Bay. Yeah. I'm used to hearing about Clifton Key. What's, is, are we talking about the same area? It's the same area, Clifton Bay, which encompasses uh, from the Albany uh, area to the, the Dive Stewart Cove to BEC, Esso, uh, Shell, Texaco stations, and then the uh, cement plant and then going around to the Clifton Heritage Park, and then the whole Clifton Bay area where Lyford Key is, ending up uh, at Ny Nygaard Key, Sims Point. So the entire area, is, entire Clifton area Bay. is Clifton Bay. Now there's the, there appears to be this huge row that's brewing, um, um, uh, some new effort now to save it, because according to reports I've read, a lot of the land or part of the land is being reclaimed. Um, there are other issues with some environmental kind of thing where maybe perhaps some beach, uh, um, some beach issue, give us an idea. Well, <clears throat> the Bahamas is facing, throughout the Bahamas, this archipelago of islands, huge development challenges. Um, very few places are left on the eastern seaboard where um, the rich who have their mega yachts and uh, want to you know, live behind gated communities and enjoy uh, exclusive facilities have the opportunity uh, there. So the Bahamas is now the new playground. And all of our islands, in particular those that are undeveloped, are just, um, they're just like little seductive cherries for these people right for to, the to, to ripe for the picking. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we are um, still very childish in our approach to development. And it's about time we began to respect our own country. And so this group at, the, at Clifton Bay, the Coalition to Protect Clifton Bay, is really using Clifton Bay as, a, as an example. It's a microcosm of development issues that are challenging the rest of the Bahamas. You mentioned Guanaki a little while ago. Well, Guanaki, unfortunately, was a little bit far from sight, far from mind. But everything that happened at Guanaki is happening at Clifton Bay. And so you have at Clifton Bay, you have the Albany development, where the wetlands have been drained to create their golf course, their um, canals and their marinas, and dredged all the way out a huge canal to accommodate the mega yachts that come in. So you have the effect, the impact that that has on the fisheries, um, on the, uh, the creeks, on the mangroves, um, on um, the, the wetlands that are there as the resource to produce a lot more fish and the, the, the fisheries grounds for us. That area feeds into the Seven Mile Reef that goes across from Clifton Bay around the top of New Providence with seven miles. It's the third largest barrier reef in the Bahamas. It's beautiful. Then you have Stewart Cove, which is ecotourism. And I mean, the dives there are very famous throughout the world, the shark dives in particular. Um, and in Clifton Bay areas where the Bond movies were filmed, some of them, uh, Dr. No, the Flipper series. And so you have ecotourism, that's an industry there. Then you have industry, you have BEC producing power, using Bunker C, which is the worst form of, of, of fuel you could use for a power plant. In fact, at Wilson City, um, we were able to get, that's the other case that I did um, for responsible development for Abaco, we persuaded the government and BEC to change from Bunker C, and which was a great uh, victory as far as we were concerned. But at BEC right now, you go out there, and at times there are three, four, five, six inches of clogs of oil everywhere. I don't know if you've ever been out there. And it's floating all across the top of the ocean there. And this is what the divers from from uh, Stuart, Stuart Cove, Cove have to go have through. To go I mean, I've, down, down, I've dived down there. I've come up with oil all over me. It's a coating of oil throughout the ocean there. It goes for miles. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, you have the cement plant. You have the Esso Texaco uh, shell bunkering stations. And you have some old derelict buildings out there from which oil is oozing out onto the ground, which is where the, the kids come right next to the Clifton Heritage site. And they come to visit you know, the Clifton Heritage site. And, you know, the history and the culture, recreational facilities there. So next to the industrial plant, you have the Clifton Heritage Site, which you all know about. About 14 years ago, there was this battle to save it. Yes, yes. Now, originally, it was a battle to save not just the land, but also the sea, mm -hmm. so that there would be a land and marine park. Okay. And that's why you hear, for instance, C.B. Moss, right, the Reverend C.B. Moss and his group, Save Clifton, talking about this is the, the second part of the battle. 
We saved the land, now it's time to save the sea. Oh, and that's why this renewed, yeah. okay. renewed uh, yes. activity. And so you have Clifton Heritage Site, which is cultural, historical, and recreational. I mean, it's one of the few places where you can go and enjoy, pretty undisturbed with forest behind you, you know, recreational beach facilities. Right. Then next to that, you have the most affluent um, real estate development, which is the Lyford Key area that goes all the way around. And that is a huge industry in itself, this residential second home yeah. um, industry where you know, the utilities and, and service-oriented facilities are provided. And so what our coalition wants to do is to try and promote a harmonious use of the area by persuading the government to pass an Environmental Protection Act, which both the PLP and the FNM have promised for decades, to pass an, a Freedom of Information Act, which is so necessary for people like you and I to just get information from the government. You were talking earlier about this young lady that was arrested in Atlantis. Well, under a Freedom of Information Act, you could go to the ministry and demand the files to see who was writing, who was creating this issue. Right. So freedom of information is like freedom of the airwaves, which the FNM brought 20 years ago. Michael, it will change the Bahamas if we have freedom of information. Michael, I know you have a quick question to try yeah. get in. I mean, I, I, you know, I see, I'm, I'm very surprised. Some years ago, I was in the back here and I saw that beach did not exist, not as large as what it was right. now. Uh, but I know the Bahamas National Trust, which I'm sure you're part of, and I think you guys have, uh, I see that they're now trying to put into the educational system these videos, be teaching young people, you know, what, how to save our, you know, our environment. Uh, and now to see that this, you would think that the governments have learned from what the Bahamas National Trust is doing in terms of, you know, saving what we are doing here now with the Clifton. I fear, um, um, uh, Michael, that these governments in the Bahamas never seem to learn anything. My FNM government promised government in the sunshine. To this day, there is no Freedom of Information Act. Why is it that after decades of promising that, government in the sunshine, the first thing they promised, it still isn't available to the Bahamian people? And you'd have thought, having lost one of the elections and being out in the wilderness, when they came back, they said, let me hurry up and get this in so I can take advantage of it next time. Again, nothing. And the PLP have now taken the bill that they just passed off the books, and they say they're rewriting it. So we're going to be another 10 decades before we get a Freedom of Information Well, Mr. Act Smith, um, continued uh, good luck with your effort and the, save co the, the coalition core. Coalition to protect Clifton, Clifton Bay. Bay. <laughs> not, not coalition to protect Code Smith. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wonderful having you on the network, and we definitely have you again. I invite people to go online sure. to um, access our petition. Mm -hmm. If you could go to protectcliftonbay.org, we have a petition for it, which has six items. If you go online, I know we don't have time, but if you go online, you'll see a lot of the educational issues that we're um, advocating, and we would welcome you to please sign the petition and support the organization. Definitely a, Thank worthy, you very much. a worthy cause. Thank you once again, Attorney Fred Smith. Uh, who is very, very um, um, caught up right now in trying to protect a key area thank here you. in New Providence. Thank you for coming up. Uh, thank you for coming on the network. Thank you We're going to lighten things up substantially right after the break. Stay close. The network continues right after this. Welcome back to the final moments of the network. Of course, we're continuing, guys, to watch Mission Catwalk and Theo Seeley's performance there, all about fashion. He's doing so well. But talking about fashion, Kadar, I know that we're, we're certain, you certainly are in-house guru on fashion and Kadar and style. Um, we were paying strict attention, really, to Kate Middleton's pregnancy style, right. then Kim Kardashian style, both different, but, but okay, I guess, for their body types. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when you look at Kate, she's all back out again. Last week, she started her... I guess work all over again you know she was she had an initially horrible pregnancy yes. she's out on the scene now showing a little peanut a nice little yeah bomb. yeah uh, she's, she's, she's doing well oven. she's doing well um good. but it's good to see her. everyone's excited yeah. you know to welcome all of this and to see her new maternity style now i but, know something interesting that's going to happen of course we're entering prom season right. and guys i know you all can think of your proms i won't forget mine that you should see the dress awful um but <laughs> we're planning this wonderful competition kadar talk about that right well we're giving one lucky audience viewer uh not audience but our well yeah our audience we're giving you the opportunity to actually submit your photos and a 100 word thing as to why we should choose you and guess what i will be styling you completely from head to toe we're providing you with hair makeup 
and photography as well. That's right, and a dress. And a dress, yes, yes. yes. I yes. My photo, submit my photos uh, no, as well. No, Michael, that's <laughs> okay. So if you want to dress okay, now here's what, front, yeah, here's what the lucky young lady uh, should do. Go to our Facebook page, uh, uh, like the page, and of course, tell us why you should be chosen. Of course, uh, we are on uh, Facebook as the network. So go on there and let us know exactly why you should be chosen to have this head-to-toe makeover and go and be the belle, the belle of your prom and looking fantastic and styled by Kadar and style. Now, of course, Kevin, in the last three seconds we have, do you remember your prom? Yeah, I remember my prom very well. Um, I met some good people at some, <laughs> had a good time at my prom. Have I did have a date. <laughs> I did have a date. I have a date. I and, I, and I was looking sharp. I must say. Very good. What, what colors you wore? Actually, it was peach and beige. That was the color. Beige. It was the colors of those days, man. You were pimping. You know what I'm saying? You're talking '87. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a little. Yeah. Nobody's gonna buy it. My kind of wore the same color. The same color? I'm, I'm sorry. It was kind of close. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. It, 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 it was the time. It was the time. '87. Yeah. '87. Well, uh, uh, hmm. Again, again, young ladies uh, from high schools, private or public, go on our Facebook page, like, and make a comment. Of course, a hundred words, words or less, and tell us why you should be the lucky, lucky young lady to be chosen to have a wonderful network prom makeover. And guess what? We're going to come and shoot some video too so that you can be on the show. Okay? Now, remember, of course, we are happy to have you join us each show. You've been, we appreciate your comments and your support on the show. And if it's happening anywhere, we talk about it right here on the network.